It is cold and we are smoking in the cold today. So I get this question a lot. It's cold out. Can I use my smoker? And the short answer is yes. Yes, you absolutely can. Some people, when it gets real cold into the teens, they'll put a welder blanket on top of this to insulate it, to keep in the heat. I know certain pellet smokers sell uh, welder blankets to help with that. But if you don't have that and you just want to get your smoker going, you can do it, all right? For beginners, they ask this question because, you know, they're uncertain and they want to get some clarity, some confirmation that they can go out back and get it done. We're going to go over today what you need to do to keep your smoker rolling in these cold temperatures. Today is about 33 degrees here in Maryland, but the windshield got it down to like 25. All right, the number one culprit for any temperature is actually wind. Wind is the, the element that messes with your smoker the most, in my opinion. If you have wind going into your firebox, that's going to stoke your fire. It is going to make it even hotter than you might want. If you have wind coming hard into your exhaust vent, that can cause some backdraft issues and really, you see that happen when your temperature is all of a sudden at 250, then if the wind's coming in hot here, it's all the way up to 285 in a matter of seconds. And then if you're getting backdraft, all of a sudden your temperature might be dropping pretty quickly. So wind's your number one culprit more than temperature itself. Now where I live, I have wind tunnels. We got a back alley here with everybody's garage. It's creating a wind tunnel we have a street in the front. So the water is only two blocks that way. So the wind coming off the water and then hitting these houses creates swirls. So I'm kind of hosed because I get wind from so many different directions. So it's really important to try to place your smoker, which I've done, into the spot that gets the most consistent wind or no wind at all. That's gonna be your first step to fighting colder elements. I'm gonna start off with a very, very full chimney of charcoal. While my charcoal is getting started, I'm going to clear out all the ash from my previous cooks because I want this to be nice and clean, nothing blocking airflow. As you saw in my last video, temperature mistakes, ash can really block airflow. So I want to make sure I'm already fighting enough elements. I don't want to be sabotaging myself by having a lot of ash build up. So make sure to clear out all your ash from your last cook. All right, so this is the regular amount I use for my summer cooks, but because of how much colder it is out, I really, I'm gonna spread this out a little to get those charcoals more dis distributed. And then I'm going to add charcoal right away. So I'm getting my charcoal base larger than normal right off the bat. And now I have to wait another 15 minutes to let these get really hot to get all that dark, bad smoke off of it. But I'm gonna distribute it just a little to help this along. I wanna make sure my basket's nice and full so that I have a really, really solid base. If I did this in the summertime, this would probably get too hot too quick for what I'm doing. But since we're fighting temperatures, we're gonna go right from the get-go of adding more charcoal. Now, I added it on top. For me, that helps get it lit faster. But I've also had the charcoal in the basket and I poured the hot charcoal on top of it. So either way you do it, this for me lets gravity or nature uh, get underneath these coals and get them lit faster. But at the same time, 
I'm still gonna have to wait 15, 20 minutes for these to get red hot before I would put any fuel or any food on anyway. What I'm really saying is, you know, some people put the charcoal down below the hot embers, other people put it on top. Um, I haven't really seen any data that supports one way is better than the other. So this just comes down to preference for me. If there is data that supports it, please point me in the right direction. But as far as I've seen, it doesn't matter. Put it in however you want. As this gets up to temp, a couple things I wanna talk about. Uh, number one is whenever I'm adding charcoal like this, before I put any meat on, I want to keep this firebox open. I don't want that dirty smoke getting in there, causing buildup. Um, does it happen sometimes? Absolutely. But this is an instance where you can keep all that bad smoke from entering your food chamber and just creating a longevity to your food chamber and keeping bad flavors away from your food in the long run. The other thing I want to mention is charcoal. All right. So I have lump charcoal here. Uh, this is rockwood. I've used it a couple times. It's very good. It does burn hotter. Uh, so I'll probably be transitioning now that I have my base, I'll probably be adding throughout the cook some lump charcoal that's going to burn even hotter to help me along. So this is good. You can mix and match your charcoal. Some people are purists. They only do lump or they only do briquettes and wood. I mix it all the time. I think it's completely fine. Other honorable mention, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is Char Blocks. I won this on Instagram. I actually haven't bought this myself yet. And to be honest, it's been sitting in my garage for about six months. I rarely use it. They come in these blocks. That's why it's called Char Blocks. Uh, they burn hotter and longer. So I have used these a couple times and I will add them into my briquettes, in with my lump. If I'm getting long in my cook and I need that extra heat, uh, I haven't produced any flavors off of this. So like briquettes, it's kind of a neutral flavor. You're gonna get your flavor from your wood. Uh, with lump charcoal, sometimes that helps produce a flavor in your barbecue. But for the most part, this doesn't produce anything. So it does burn really hot. These are expensive in my opinion, because look how tiny this box is. They're 30, I think it's 35 bucks on Amazon. However, I still have this box. Have I used it much? No, I haven't. But you do get a lot of punch out of these. So when it comes to my briquettes where I pay 17 bucks for two bags and I go through that in two weekends, um, I could see these lasting you a good bit of time. So. They are something you might want to try out. I don't know. Go for it if you want to. They are pretty cool, but they don't produce flavor, in my opinion, that I've picked up on. So in a sense, they're a lot like briquettes. Uh, do whatever you want to do. These aren't completely ashed over, but I think we are safe to close down this chamber. It's not producing any smoke off of these, so it's burning nice and hot. So we're good to go here. I have my Inkbird digital thermometer on here. It's 37 degrees according to Apple on my watch. The wind chill, uh, the wind's blowing five to seven miles per hour. So it's probably around 28 degrees. I'm cold, I'm ready to go inside. And this, you know, I'll never hard sell anybody, but being able to monitor this on my app inside is key because I'm going inside, I'm gonna drink some coffee, warm up, and most of my cook, I'm gonna be inside because I can't be sitting outside here next to my smoker. So check this out in the link. Uh, like I said, Inkbird's awesome, but by all means, search Amazon and get whatever you like, whatever works best for you and your budget. All right, my coals are running nice and hot. My temperature is 213 to 175. Here's where I have my probes. So you can see that uh, one closest to the firebox, it's 213 and furthest away is 166. So we're definitely getting a lot of um, difference between the temperatures. So the first thing I'm gonna do to try to bring those temperatures together is I'm gonna close down my firebox. 
Now the wind is blowing into it, so it is stoking it a good bit, uh, but leaving it wide open. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this exhaust vent. Now ever since I did my mod video, I lost the screw. Yay, go me. I'm such a dunce. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to restrict the airflow and try to make a more tight, airtight chamber to see if that helps get those temperatures closer together. We'll come back in about 15 minutes and check on this. One of the things I forgot to mention with the charcoal that I was supposed to is I got these as a gag gift. I thought it'd be pretty cool to kind of scare my kids and put this in the charcoal and say like, oh my God, there's a skull head in here. I'm sorry to say this. Ugh, let me get that out of the bag. All right, 25 bucks got me these three super tiny charcoal. So when you see the advertisement, it looks like you get these massive amounts, like 40 to 50 of these charcoals and that's the way they advertise it and they're just massive here i'll pull this out of the plastic bag not gonna lie this is really cool but at the same time very disappointing uh they look big on screen right here but i promise you they are not that big um, so i got these as a gag gift i thought i was going to get like 50 of them to you know sneak into my friend's backyard barbecues and kind of be like holy crap there's a skeleton in your charcoal uh, but that's not the case. Uh, they just haven't worked out. So just a little heads up there. Been only five minutes, uh, but the temperature is not going in the direction I want it to. So I'm going to go back to my old faithful. I'm going to open this up. All right. And I'm going to add more fuel because that's what this fire needs with it being this cold out. I need to get this to 250. So let's start adding some fuel. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do is start adding, sorry, doing it one-handed, some of the char blocks to get that even more base of charcoal. So I'm going to get that going. Uh, this is a good time. You could switch it up, add lump charcoal. This stuff burns really hot, so this should help get it along. And I'm going to start adding my first piece of wood to get that going really good. Um, I'm just trying to get temperature up here. I'm just trying to get to a consistent 250. So we will check on this in about 15, 20 minutes. Clocking in about 20 minutes later, we are at 258 closest to the firebox and 189 furthest from the firebox. Uh, one thing I had to do was open up my firebox door there wasn't enough oxygen getting in. The wind has died down a little, but as you can see, that's going nicely with adding that extra amount of char blocks and a split of wood. Uh, when I didn't have the door open, my exhaust vent was a little too heavy on the smoke. So there wasn't enough fuel uh, airflow to produce the right type of combustion that I wanted. Now we're burning a clean fire and we are at temperature. However, you are going to have to adapt when you're cooking in the cold because if I put, see, the temperatures are swinging drastically. Uh, the back is holding pretty steady, but this was 238 right before I started recording. Now the wind's kicking up again. It got up to 258. Now it's dropping back down. So one of the things I wanna do is get some gloves because I can't, let's see, can I, can I handle this? All right. So what, I'll, what I'm gonna do here is try to not burn my hand. Come on, come on. All right. So let's put these probes on the top because those temperatures aren't going to get my cook done. Sorry, I'm trying to do this without burning myself. All right, so let's do this for 10 minutes because in this cold weather, you might need to cook your food up top here to get the most heat and most consistency. So let's check back 
in about 15 minutes. That's part of cooking in the cold. You're going to have to adapt and change uh, your tactics. Cooking it right in the center like I normally do, to me there's too much difference between the temperatures. So let's check out the top here. Let's see how our wood's doing real quick. That's a good fire. Those blocks you can see are catching nicely and producing good heat. Finally, something warming me up. All right, so we hit on the top shelf. We're holding right at about 200. Oh, this is making my hands <laughs> warm. It is cold out. Uh, my equipment doesn't really like this. It keeps freezing up on me and doing weird things. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this up. But the premise of this was, can we cook in the cold? And you have to adapt to when your elements are changing around you. Uh, if I were to cook anything on this right now, I would put it on the top shelf. We're holding both temperatures right at 233, 232. So now as I continue to add more fuel, get some food on there, I should get to that sweet spot of 250 if that was your target temp. If you were shooting for 225, uh, you're there. Uh, so you can cook in the cold, but you're going to have to know your settings. For me, having this wide open, is the best way I like to cook. And I've done other videos where closing it halfway, if you haven't seen that one, that was pretty interesting. I'll put it up right there. Uh, but everybody's smokers a little bit different uh, depending on which brand you have. Uh, it can be done, just be prepared uh, for what your smoker is going to produce the best results. Wide open for me, firebox door, wide open, to get that fuel going to, cre to create that blue smoke. You can't even see any smoke going on. So I'm getting plenty of oxygen and I've gotten to a target temp that I can smoke even in these colder temperatures. I hope you guys uh, are still smoking in the winter time. There's no off season in my opinion for getting that smoke rolling and make sure to check out the playlist so you see all the basics of getting the right type of barbecue from day one. If you want to further enhance your smoking game, make sure to check out our Facebook group, Kingsford Stockade 49 inch smoker and grill. We let anybody that's got any type of smoker that wants to get better in their own backyard into the group. It's a great group, probably the best on Facebook. We don't deal with any nonsense. We're just there to all become better at our craft in the backyard. As always, I hope you all are having a great weekend and you have that smoke rolling. See ya.